Hello and welcome back to the entrance of thy words. We finished up last week with the Abrahamic covenant and now we will move into the Mosaic covenant. The main differences between the two are, like we talked about for the previous two or three sessions, is that the Abrahamic covenant is an unconditional covenant. It's given to Abraham, uh, first of all, while he's asleep. So there's no way that God was making that covenant with him saying that I'm going to do this for you if you do this. Uh, and that would make it a conditional covenant. So that didn't happen. Um, that's one of those covenants that God says he's going to do this for, for you and for your seed no matter what happens. Um, and then we looked, I think last time we looked at the fact that that covenant passes from Abraham to Isaac, to Jacob, uh, and obviously from Jacob to the 12 tribes. Uh, and so they, they get that piece of ground no matter what. Um, the timing is up to the Lord, and we, we looked at that, a little bit of that too, uh, but it's, it's a, an unconditional covenant. Now, we look at the children of Israel as they're about to move into uh, what we know as the land of Canaan, the promised land, and God's going to come out and make another covenant <clears throat> with Moses. But this is not just a covenant with one person. This is a more of a, a national covenant. Um, and the, the children of Israel, actually in Exodus chapter 19, uh, they agree to keep the Ten Commandments, and they don't do that. Who can? None of us do that. So this is a this is a conditional covenant made to a nation, and God is saying to this nation, "Look, I'm going to put you in this piece of ground. I'm going to give you this piece of property, and here's what I want you to do. And as long as you do this." then I'm going to allow you to still dwell in the land. I'm going to bless the fruit of the land. I'm going to take care of everything there for you, give you this, bless your children, all the stuff. And then as long as you don't do this, this certain uh, number of things, don't do this. And if you start to do that, then I'll curse you and eventually I'll kick you out of the land. So you pick it up in Exodus chapter 19 and you look at verse 3. The Bible says, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. So this, this covenant is not made just with Abraham, just with one person. Moses is the person that God is speaking with here, but he's telling Moses to deliver this to the nation, to the house of Jacob, the children of Israel. Verse 4, <clears throat> you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. That, that'll that happen again in Revelation chapter 12. In fact, the Lord talks about it in Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. He's going he's gonna to take care of them again and bring them out and uh, back into the land. Verse 5, now therefore, the key word in verse 5 is if. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So here he says, if you do this, if you do that, then here's what I'll do. And he reminds them that every, I own everything. So... Uh, I'm going to make sure that you have the land if you do what I tell you to do. If not, I'll kick you out. That doesn't mean that the Abrahamic covenant at that point is null and void. Just because God kicks them out of the land, which he did. He dispersed them among many nations. And then eventually, 19, uh, Balfour Declaration uh, after World War uh, I, and then, the, and then uh, uh, they become a nation in 1948. And he's slowly but surely brought them back in. So these are two separate covenants. So you have to be careful there um, <clears throat> not to make the Abrahamic covenant null and void based on the information that you read concerning the Mosaic covenant. They're two different things. 
verse 6, Exodus 19, 6, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. See, this thing's national. It's not one person. These are the words which, which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. So all the words are uh, verses 3 through 6 and all the different things that God said here. Verse 8, And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So God has a, makes a covenant there and with the children of Israel. He uses Moses as a spokesperson. He says, Moses delivers the message to the people, and in lieu of that, the people say, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Well, they want to, but Moses carries that message from the people back to the Lord, and, he, and the Lord knows. They want to do that, but they can't do it. And, uh, you know, if I, if I ask you, uh, are you willing to keep all of the Ten Commandments? Well, yeah, I am. I, that's what I want to do. Okay, now... Have you done it? No, you haven't. So they are zealous. They are they are trying to do the right thing, but uh, they're not able to accomplish that. And eventually it gets them kicked out of the land. <coughs> Come to Deuteronomy chapter 5. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles and you're able to turn with us and look, uh, look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29. says, concerning this, promise that the children of Israel made to God based on the covenant that he's trying to make with them here, that he's making with them here. And they said, all that you've told us to do, we're going to do that. Deuteronomy 5, 29, here's the Lord's response to that. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me. That's, that's the way you actually keep the commandments and actually stay in the will of God and do what you're supposed to do is fear. Fear's a great motivator. It just is. Um, I use this analogy from time to time, but if you were to allow me to stand in front of a large youth group, um, youth camp, something like that, and if you could highlight those kids that actually have a healthy fear of God, then I could narrow it down for you and show you the young people that have an opportunity to get something done for God. Only the ones that fear God are going to be the ones that have an opportunity to do something for Him. Those kids that don't have a healthy fear of God, they're not going to get anything done. I'm not making fun. I'm not poking at those young people. You know, I wish, I hope all of them will serve God and do right and all that. But they're not going to be able to get that done unless they have a healthy fear of God. So it starts that way. Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Oh, that they could do that. I know what they're saying they want to do. I know what they're saying they're going to do. I wish they would actually have a heart in them to do that. <clears throat> if you back up in Deuteronomy 5 and look at verse 22, here's what you find. He's just given the Ten Commandments, and that's what he's asking them to keep. And verse 22 says, These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me, Moses says. The Ten Commandments were actually written by God Almighty with his hand. He wrote them. So when he says, Will you do this? Will you keep my words? He's asking them to keep the covenant and the words of something that he actually physically wrote on tables of stone himself and then gave to Moses to deliver to the people. So <clears throat> how important is that? Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Now, next time, what we're going to do is we'll probably spend another week or two here on the Mosaic Covenant, and we'll look at the promises that God made. If you'll do this, then I, here's what I'll do to your land and your children and all that. And if you don't, then here's what's going to happen ultimately. Again, the Mosaic Covenant is a conditional covenant. It's based on 
the conditions, uh, their conditions that are put on the children of Israel, and it's based on their attitude, behavior, all the different things that they do or don't do. And that will determine whether or not they get to stay in the land and enjoy the blessings of the land. Th this is important because as in the United States of America, we don't have a Mosaic covenant, but we do have that underlying premise over and over again as a nation that if we honor God, keep his words, pay attention to his words, give him the credit for all the blessings that we have, then he continues to bless. We turn away from his word, we side with the enemies of Israel, then our land starts to change. Things start to change and then ultimately, eventually, someone else will take over. Hope you got something out of this. Good day and God bless you.